Hi, welcome to another video. Today, I want to share one of the ways GPs meet the needs of the population they serve. Our patients usually call up the surgery or send electronic requests for appointments to address their health needs and most of them are fitted into a routine appointment or triage clinic to sort out. However, if all the available slots are gone, what does the practice do? In this video, we would explore the current practice of appointment allocation and how GPs deal with the increasing volume of consultations they undertake on daily basis. General practice is in the business of providing appointments. In fact, this is one of the measures by which the regulatory bodies check the performance of primary care. Bear in mind primary care is not funded based on the number of appointments it undertakes. We have covered how the GP business is funded in another video. The link is in the description below. The latest data from NHS Digital about appointments in general practice across England showed that 27.1 million appointments were estimated to have happened in December 2022, of which 250,000 were COVID vaccinations delivered by practice or primary care network. 48.1% of appointments took place on the same day that they were booked. Similarly, 48.8% of all appointments in December 2022 were carried out by a GP and 20.6% were carried out by nurses. In the same month, 91% of all appointments booked were attended and 68.3% were carried out face-to-face. -face. Acute general consultations make up 20% of appointments which has fostered the role of what we call a GP duty doctor. Several practices approach this in different ways. This urgent appointment system is mainly reserved for consultations that don't have a scheduled appointment. Typically, when you call reception and we are full, this is passed on to a triage team which will include a GP. The GP decides the reason for the encounter is urgent for the day and puts you on the list for a consultation on the same day. Most GP practices try to meet the staff demands of this type of work by putting more of their own staff on the duty team and sometimes may engage a locum GP to deal with the excess especially if they need face-to-face -face reviews. As a GP on the duty team, you would be exposed to consultations involving a variety of reasons for encounter. For example, discussing the results of an abnormal investigation that needs an urgent referral, mental health, acute infection, maternal concerns, etc. Being on a duty team is one of those ways that you can really see the breadth of consultations we encounter in primary care. Some patients use buzzwords like, I had to call, to signify their level of uncertainty or empathy towards the practice staff and sometimes they say, I really don't want to be a nuisance. GPs understand this to mean they would like to have an opportunity to speak to a member of the primary care team. Being on duty with your GP colleagues can be quite interactive if you need alternative, corroborating ideas about clinical decisions or processes. You'll also enhance your use of the electronic health record and associated systems to appropriately navigate and optimize patient care. But to be honest, sometimes you pause to reflect, was this patient's need urgent? Who determines what is urgent? The patient or healthcare professional? Traditionally, my understanding of urgency had been in medical model terms. These are the type of conditions that we'd hand over to our colleagues in the hospital. However, with time spent in primary care, this has changed to reflect that urgent or acute is anything we provide for any person who believes that they are suffering from an urgent condition or urgent need, irrespective of whether this requires either urgent investigation or treatment. Therefore, to answer the question, who decides what is urgent, the patient or the healthcare professional? The answer is the patient decides. Medical training helps you recognize the pattern of illness but what your patient calls urgent may not really be urgent. You'll have the opportunity to help them to allay their anxiety, which in most cases is all there is. How does a person determine their candidacy to book an urgent appointment with the GP? Is it the previous experiences with the healthcare service like the ease of getting an appointment or not knowing where else to ask for advice? Or is it their thoughts on how, in crisis, their health is? This sense of being in crisis in their mind might be the fundamental reason for the encounter. The barometer to judge what in crisis means to a person is beyond the scope of this video. In some circumstances, 
the patient may not be making the determination to use an urgent appointment alone. Acknowledging the decision maker's concerns will be a quick way to build the rapport needed to address the unmet need whether it is urgent or not. A GP-led duty team could manage a busy duty day by signposting to other services like the mental health team for mental health, and pharmacy teams for medication queries or minor illnesses like conjunctivitis. Sometimes we do ask you to call back if we really think a routine appointment will serve you better. In conclusion, whenever you are asked, why did you book this patient in, was the appointment really necessary? The primary care team should always reply, the patient thought so. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more educational videos. Bye for now.